This video will demonstrate how to use Cloud Manager for Exclaim to register, configure, and troubleshoot Exclaim access points. In this demonstration, we'll be showing you how to create a Cloud Manager account, register your Exclaim access points and add additional access points, add and configure guest and or business network or SSIDs, assign network SSIDs to access points, connect your access points with Cloud Manager, navigate the Cloud Manager dashboard, Troubleshoot access points and show how to run report. To create your Cloud Manager account or to log in after creating it, you'll go to the ExclaimWireless.com website and click on the Cloud Sign In button. If you haven't created an account yet, you would click on the Create an Account button. Here you would enter your first name, last name, your email address, your company name, username, password, and you would select your country. After you've done that, then click on Register. If you've already logged in once, then go ahead and just enter your username and password and click Login. When you first log in, if you don't have any APs registered, it will automatically take you to the Access Point tab. So go ahead and enter your serial numbers. And if you have several APs, it's good to have those serial numbers listed somewhere. So we'll go ahead and register three Access Points and then confirm the serial number. And that'll verify that the serial number is good. Go ahead and then and enter your AP's name. So I'm going to give my AP a name of Sunnyvale Coffee, and it's an XI2. And since I'm going to add two more access points, I'm just going to select Add Another Access Point. I could select Done, but I'm just going to hit Add Another Access Point. So I'll go ahead and, and enter my second serial number and then confirm the serial number. This one's going to be called Fresno Coffee. And on this access point, this is an XI3. So I'm going to give it a tag here called Fresno Coffee. And I'm going to enter my third access point. And I'm going to confirm that serial number. This one is also called Fresno Coffee. And this access point is an XI2. So I'm going to leave the uh, tag here for Fresno Coffee as well. When I'm finished adding my access points, then I can click Done. And you'll get a message saying Saving APs. So now I've added my three access points, and they're listed on the screen here. Sunnyvale Coffee, Fresno Coffee, and I've got two Fresno Coffees. One's an XI2 and one's an XI3. So the next thing I want to do is go to the Network tab and set up my network SSIDs. You can create two types of networks. You can add a guest network or you can add a business network. In this demonstration, we're going to be adding a guest network. And later on, in another demonstration, we'll add a business network. And I'll show you what the differences are. So to add a guest network, I click on Guest Network. And then I would enter the SSID's name. I'm going to call one Fresno underscore coffee for my Fresno coffee shop. I'll give it a tag. You notice the status can be on or off. And the next tab down says Enable Hotspot. In this case, I'm not going to enable Hotspot. And if you notice the difference between here, if Hotspot is turned off, then it gives me some security options of Open or WPA2. If I click on, those security options go away. So I'm going to click on Off, and I'm going to set a WPA2, and ask them for the passphrase. And because this is a demo, I'm going to put in a simple passphrase of 30 30 30 30. Broadcast SSID is going to be on radio. You can select both or 2.4 or 5 gigahertz. I'm going to leave it as both. VLAN 1 is automatically your default VLAN. You could change that if you had a different VLAN. Client isolation is on. The rate limiting uplink is unlimited, but if for some reason I wanted to limit that, I could select which option I wanted. And the same for rate limiting on downlink. Default is unlimited. MAC filter is turned off. We'll talk more about the MAC filter later, but in this case, I'm turning it off. And then I would hit Save. Okay, so we've added our first Fresno SSID. I'm going to add another one. And I'm going to call this one my Sunnyvale Coffee. It's going to be my Sunnyvale Coffee Shop. Tag is going to be Sunnyvale. I'm going to leave the status on. Enable Hotspot is going to be turned off. Security. I'm going to set up my WPA2, and I'll make sure that that's my passcode that I put in on my other one, just for the sake of this demonstration. Broadcast SSID is on, radio is both, 
and all the other parameters are going to be the same. So I'm going to get save. So now you can see that we have two SSIDs added. Up to this point, I've registered my access points and created my SSIDs. Next, I need to assign the SSID to the access point. So from the access point tab, I could do this in two ways. I could select the access point here, and under the action drop-down box, I could select attach a W wireless LAN. Now you notice here that it lists the two SSIDs that I have. Since this is my Sunnyvale Coffee, I'm going to assign my Sunnyvale Coffee to that and it'll tell you that the wireless LAN has been successfully attached. On the next access point, instead of clicking on the action box, if I just click on the access point serial number, it'll bring up a menu on the side, and I can type in the name of the SSID. As soon as I type the first letter, it'll bring up a list of the SSIDs that I have. So I'm going to select Fresno Coffee. Now I could put additional SSIDs in here. Remember that each radio can have up to four SSIDs. So if I had additional SSIDs, I could also attach them in this way as well. In this case, I'm only going to use Fresno Coffee. So then I'll go ahead and hit Save. And then on my third access point, I'll go ahead and assign it with a drop-down box like I did in the first time. And I'll put Fresno Coffee on that one as well. So now if I go back to my dashboard, now that I've assigned the SSIDs to the access point, after a short period of time, the access point connects to the cloud manager and the SSIDs will be broadcast by the access points. The next step is to connect your clients to the network. Now that you've registered, configured, and assigned your network SSIDs to your access points, after a short period of time, the access point will connect with the cloud manager and then you'll be able to see some statistics and metrics using the cloud manager dashboard. So let's look at what we have. In the upper left hand corner, you see the number of access points. In this case, it says we have a total of three, and in this case, we have three online and zero offline. The next box over shows the online AP health. We have three healthy and zero needs audit. If we had one in the audit column, it would mean that the access point would need some type of attention. On the right, we have the top three APs, and it lists the APs that we have, and the number of clients that they have. We can also select throughput if we wanted to, and it'll show the top three APs based on throughput. In the middle, we have clients by wireless LAN. So for example, here we have Fresno Coffee and we have Sunnyvale Coffee. These are the SSIDs that I currently have. If I roll my mouse over this bar for Fresno Coffee, it shows that two clients are connected with 2.4 gigahertz, and we also have three clients connected on the 5 gigahertz radios. On the Sunnyvale Coffee, we have two clients connected on 5 gigahertz. Towards the left bottom, we show clients by OS type. And if we roll over these, we can see that we got one Mac OS, we got one Android, we got two Windows machines, and we have three iOS platforms. On the right, it shows the legend for iOS, Windows, Mac, and Android. And then over on the right, we have clients by signal strength. And all of our clients show excellent connectivity except for one that shows to be good. If we go up to the access point tab, this will show us the number of access points that we have and give us some detail on those. So for example, in this case, we have three APs and it gives us the MAC address, the name of the access point, the IP address, the model number. So in this case, you see that we have an XI2, an XI3, and another XI2, and the tags that are associated with those. In this case, they're all three online, the status is healthy, update available, it says there's no update available, and over on the right we have an action box. So for example, if I selected the first AP here, which was Fresno Coffee, which is an XI2, I could hit the drop down box and I could attach a wireless LAN, I could edit the AP, reboot the AP, reset it, upgrade, or delete the AP. So that would be some of the functions under the action column that I could have. If I click on a particular access point, it brings up information on that access point, and at the top I can reboot the AP, I can locate the AP, and if I hit locate, this would flash the LEDs on the access point for 20 seconds. So, for example, if you had two or three APs in the same room and you weren't sure which one was which, then you could find out which one they were. If I hit reset, this will do a factory reset on the AP, and I could also check for upgrades. Under Networks, I could add additional network SSIDs if I wanted to. Remember, we can have a total of up to eight SSIDs per uh, access point. And then down further, we have other details. So if we scroll down, uh, we can find the AP name, tag, model number, 
and the firmware number, which is important if you think you might have to upgrade, MAC address, IP address, NetMask gateway, and then at the bottom we have our channel selection. So we have our 2.4 GHz channel, which automatically is set to auto, or if we wanted to specify a particular channel, we could do that. Same for the 5 GHz channel. And then we could set our channel width for 2.4 at 20 or 40, and our 5 GHz at 20 or 40. And at the bottom we have our hotspot. Now we'll talk about hotspot a little bit later, so I don't want to go into that at this point in time. If I click on my Networks tab, this will show us the networks that we've configured. And as you'll see, we have four networks configured. If I wanted to click on one of those individual networks, such as Fresno Coffee, this will give us some additional information. So I could go in and edit the network, and this brings up the network edit page that we've seen before. So we'll go back. It shows clients by OS type. So we've got, in this case, we've got uh, iOS, we've got two clients, we've got one Android, and we've got one Mac OS on this SSID, and it gives me some more information on the clients that are attached. If I click on the Clients tab, this will bring up a list of the clients that are associated to the SSIDs. In the upper left, I have clients by wireless LAN. If I roll over my circle here, I can see that there are two clients on Sunnyvale Coffee, and I have four on Fresno Coffee. There's a little legend on the right here showing which color responds to which SSID. In the middle, I have clients by OS type, and I can roll around on the circle here and find out which clients are associated with which colors. So I've got Android of 1, iOS 2, Mac OS is 1, Windows, I have two of those. Once again, I have a legend on my right. And also on the right, I can look by clients by RF mode. So in this case, I've got two connected to 2.4 gigahertz radios, and I've got four on the 5 gigahertz radios. In the center, it lists the clients, and it shows the MAC address, the host name, the OS type, the IP address, the SSID, the AP's name, and the AP serial number, and the RF mode. For example, it shows 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz, which radios they're attached to. Then we have the RSSI, which gives the signal strength, the received data, and the transmit data. And on the right, under Action, we have de-authentication. If I select a particular client and I want to de-authenticate that client, I could then click on de-authentication. And what that will do is de-authenticate the client, which means the client would then be knocked off the Wi-Fi. The client would then have to reassociate with the Wi-Fi and re-authenticate again. I could also do a bulk de-auth. So if I selected, for example, three clients and I went under bulk action and hit de-auth, then that would de-authenticate those three clients. So the client screen then gives me a summary of the information on the particular clients associated. If I want to go back to the dashboard, I could go to the upper left and click on dashboard, or I could go to the top and click on dashboard. So I'll go ahead and click on dashboard on the left. Another tab that we have at the top is the reports tab. So if I click on the reports tab, under the report type, I can have three types of reports. I can have a summary report, an access point report, or a client report. And in order to get a report, I would put in a start, an end date, and a time. So I'm going to select November 24th at 12 p.m. And I'm going to select November 25th. And I'm going to select an ending time. And that time has to be before the current time. So I'm going to select the time of 9.45. Then I'll hit Generate Report. And it'll take a few seconds for the report to generate. I'll get a success message saying the report has been generated. Please allow a few minutes. And then the report is positioned down below here. So if I click on the download button, that'll download the report. Depending upon what browser it may download, it will ask you to save it. So in this case, I'm going to save it. And this is my report over here. I open it up. So it gives me a summary report created on the 25th of November tells me who it's created for, the company, the start period, and the end period. Gives me a little summary here. Shows that I've got four WLANs, three APs, and eight clients. If I scroll down a little bit, and let me blow this up in just a skosh. This shows my AP summary. So in this case, I've got three APs. It gives me the serial number, the MAC address, the name, the AP model number, the software version, the uptime, and the requested date. And it gives me a little pie graph here on the APs by model number. And as you can see, I've got two XI2s and one XI3. I scroll down a little bit further. This gives me the top 10 access points. In this case, we only had three. But if I had 10, it would show all 10. And it 
rates them by clients, by AP. I get the maximum clients and the unique clients, so it shows a little graph on that. Once again, at the bottom, I have a little table that shows the AP name, serial number, the unique clients, the maximum clients, the average throughput, if there was any activity on that, and the maximum throughput. If I scroll down a little further, it gives me clients by OS type. The little pie graph here shows that Mac OS, I've got one, Android, I've got two, iOS, I've got three, and Windows, I've got two. Clients by network, just breaks those out into the each, each network. Clients by radio, I've got six clients on the 5 gigahertz and two on the 2.4 gigahertz. I scroll down further, it gives me the top 10 clients, and these are based upon the data transmitted. So it looks like we've only got two clients that are doing any data on this particular report. This little table gives me the MAC address, the received data, and the transmitted data. Total of that. If I scroll down a little further, this gives me the uh, data comparison to a previous week, if my access points had been up for a period of time, and it gives me the current period and then the average of a week ago. So let's go ahead and close the report out. So I'll go back to the dashboard. The other tab that we have at the top is the settings tab. If I click on that, I have a number of things that I can do. First is my profile. I set this up when I first registered my AP and registered my account. So this gives my name, my email address, company name, and so forth. And if I want to change that, I could update that. Or if I wanted to change the password, I could type in a new password and do that as well. We have some other tabs on the side. For example, notifications. I could be notified when an access point goes offline for more than 30 minutes or for 60 minutes, depending upon which one I choose. Or I could choose to send a network report every week on a particular day of the week. So you would select which day you wanted. It's important to note that the cloud manager will keep up to seven days of data. And then I can click the update if I want to do that. If I go to the administrator tab, Cloud Manager gives us the ability to add admins. So, for example, if I wanted to add another person, I would put in their first, last name, their email, and all the other information. So this would be an example if we had two or three people that you want to assign to be administrators for this account. This is where you would do that. You could then click on Add Another Admin if you had two people or more. Another option that we have is to add multiple admins. If you had four or five admins, Instead of adding them in individually, if you had them in a spreadsheet somewhere, you could click on this, and then you could browse for the CSV spreadsheet. So that's just another way of adding admins. So I think as you can see from this short demo, the Cloud Manager is a simple yet powerful tool for registering, configuring, and running simple metrics for your Exclaim network. We have some other videos that will show how to set up a hotspot and how to set up 802.1x authentication.